These days, the road to the International Space Station passes through an underwater laboratory called Aquarius, home to a research program called NEMO. Before most astronauts are sent up into orbit, they are sent down to the waters off Florida to experience a close analog to life in space. Living up to 10 days on the sea floor, the Aquarius crew speak directly to the International Space Station by video phone. We have you loud and clear. How do you hear us? Oh, we have you loud and clear. Hello. There you are. We see you hey, now. Hey, guys. We see you now. I can see where there's a really close analog to what we're doing here and uh, the tight quarters that y'all experience right now. I think you guys have a couple more windows. <laughs> I'm Dan Neal with Wired Science. We're down here in Key Largo, and we're about to get on a boat to go out to NOAA's underwater habitat called Aquarius. We're headed out to a restricted stretch of ocean. Pleasure boats aren't welcome. Oh, man. <laughs> they said this thing was a buoy. It's a freaking floating island. Looks like a three-masted schooner from here. Pirates of the Caribbean of oceanography. This is uh, the Aga mask. Uh, I believe that one day it will revolutionize drowning. Not today, not today. Roger, you ready? It's coming off. Okay. And Bob, just be advised, we're taking this tank off in order to recharge it. Happy. The space folks declined my request for a trip to the International Space Station. It was something about a $20 million airfare. But Noah did say I could visit Aquarius as long as I stayed outside the capsule. The dry part is for crew only. Okay, government acronym alert. NOAA is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And NEMO? NEMO stands for the NASA Extreme Environment Mission Operations. It's not the little fish. This barnacle-encrusted piece of equipment is the 15-year-old Aquarius itself, the world's only operational underwater habitat. The NASA guys say it's about the size of a school bus. It's also big and long and yellow. It kind of looks like a field trip to SeaWorld gone horribly awry. I wish I had a fishing line. When you're working on the seafloor, it's a very close analog to being on the moon. And NASA hopes we'll be back on the moon in about 12 years, using it as a stepping stone to Mars. Unlike the 1960s one small step for man, this time we'll be better prepared for moonwalking. When we went to the moon for the first time, we really didn't know what to expect. And Buzz Aldrin actually went out and did a series of tasks where he would run and, and bounce and, and try to stop because he didn't know what was going to happen, whether he would tumble over or just be able to stop like you do on Earth. You are clear to go to the bottom. Coffee. We tend to think of gravity as the vertical force that keeps our feet on the ground. But the physics of motion are actually more complicated. In a microgravity environment, like on the moon or underwater, the center of gravity we might find comfortable at home could be too high or too low. The work they're doing around Aquarius will help astronauts learn to move without wasting energy and might help improve the design of new spacesuits. We're looking at what is optimal for the astronaut slash aquanaut. What's easier, to walk, to jog, to run? Can you stop? Can you pick things up? Can you shovel? They're in this extreme environment that they can't leave. They work together as a team. They have a task that they have to do. And it's very similar to the extravehicular activity in space. We have a communications team that's working with them in the Mission Control Center. We have everything choreographed. 
step-by-step -step procedures, and there's safety concerns and restrictions, just like in a spacewalk. Kevin would like to take a picture with the two of us here. That'd be great. Since I couldn't actually enter Aquarius, I went to Nemo's land base to make a phone call to Sandy Magnus, commander of the Nemo 11 mission. Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. Sandy was a crew member on the space shuttle and visited the International Space Station in October 2002. Space to ground one for robotics, we're going in for the grapple. How does the feeling of weightlessness in space compare to the near weightlessness of uh, being outside the habitat in 60 feet of water? Well, some things, of course, are remarkably similar as far as uh, being neutrally buoyant uh, underwater and being able to move things a little bit heavier than you might have in space. But here, the drag of the water, of course, affects your motion. And so some of Newton's laws aren't quite so obvious. In space, you know, if I just push off, I keep going and going and going until I hit something or somebody stops me. So there are some differences. But nonetheless, it seems to be a pretty good analog to try out some of these scenarios that we're doing. We went to the moon decades ago. There must be some big changes since then. There's nothing like doing it to, uh, to get it into your head appropriately, but the technology is a little bit different today as well. So we can package, for example, the spacesuits. We have a lot more options now because of miniaturization and the advances in electronics to package the spacesuits a little bit more compactly. What will you do when you get out of the underwater habitat? I might sleep a little bit, definitely look uh, look up at the sun and look at the plants. It was something I noticed when I got back from space was I missed the color green, the plants and the trees, the smell of the earth. Quite a few of the people that are in training right now for station have gone through this experience. It allows the individual to know if this is the right thing for them. Oh boy, wow. You guys are on the right track. I don't think that we've provided any training at NASA that's any better in that short of time. So you guys are um, really enjoy it while you can because it's a wonderful experience. Yeah, I would just say that as commander, I'm a little disappointed that you'd spend that much time underwater with two Army guys, an Air Force guy, and no Navy guy. <laughs> here today on the Nemo 11 crew are in training for a space station mission that will probably start flying us sometime in the next two or three years. The training program for space station is very, very long, and uh, we've been doing it about a year already. So you should expect to see us sometime in 2008, 2009 uh, launch up to station. Well, good luck in there. Don't worry, buddy. They won't let me in either. For Wired Science, this is Dan Neal.